Happy Tuesday, everybody. How you guys doing? It's your girl, V the Notary. I hope you guys are having a good week. Uh, my apologies for my absence. I've been absent for a few days, um, but I'm back. I was out of town, and so I definitely want to bring you guys some more content this week. This week shouldn't be as crazy for me as it has been in the last couple weeks, so... Um, yes, I'm glad to be back and let's get into this video. So I wanted to, well, the idea for this video is, um, a lot of your comments and questions on my page from, specifically from people who are aspiring loan signing agents or notaries is what are some of the things I should expect? You know, what, you know, tell me more about this career. I've been thinking about doing it. I've been wanting to do it for so long. And, you know, I have questions, right? And so I thought it would be cool. I'm going to just freestyle this. But I thought it would be really interesting if I talked to you guys about some of the things that they don't tell you about being a loan signing agent, right? You hear about the flexibility of the job, how wonderful it is to work for yourself, all of these things, right? But... I just wanted to give you guys a few little tidbits about some of the things you probably won't see on the internet or maybe you will, but you know, I always try to bring a fun, you know, um, firsthand perspective on all of the different things that I've experienced. So, you know, we're going to jump right into it. So the first thing you guys that uh, you people don't really talk about, uh, uh, you know, when you become a loan, a loan signing agent specifically. And again, these are <laughs> some of these are good, some of these are bad. It's not to scare you, but it's just look. This is it is what it is. The, you know, the the job description is what it is, and so it's better to be informed and armed with all the information that you can, so that you you know you can plan accordingly. Okay. All right. So the first thing I did not know this is that you are going to have some signers that are slow. There I said it. I got it off my chest. I've been wanting to say that to y'all for the longest time. I might have, you know, implied it, but let's just really be real, okay? You're going to have some signers that are going to really annoy you because they're going to take a long time, okay? Um, and I, you guys always hear me talking about buyer's packages and all of these things. And all that's great because, you know, some signers will be quick in buyer's packages, some won't, you know, whatever. And I don't want to pick on buyer's packages because they are necessary. But some signers are really slow and annoying. And it's just, you know, the, the thing is, it's part of the job, you guys. It's like you cannot escape it. But some signers, they're just, they're just, they're just annoying. And I'm going to go a little deeper. And I hope that I don't offend anybody. But I'm just trying to be as real as I can with being honest. Um, when you do certain signings like reverse mortgages, where you are de dealing with a certain demographic of people, again, this is not everyone, but there are some elderly signers that are very, very slow with signings. I understand that, you know, you know, as you get older, things change, you move a little slower. And this is not everyone. <laughs> Let me preface this because I do not want to offend anybody, but... Sometimes when you have elderly signers, sometimes signings can go a lot slower and people don't really talk about this, but I am here to be honest and be, and, you know, arm you with the information so that when you do certain types of signings, you're prepared to pack your patience, okay? But again, you know, we want all of our signers to read thoroughly, you know, to understand what they are signing. So I am in no way implying that anybody should just speed through a signing without knowing what they're signing. But I think that that's what makes a good loan signing agent also is a loan signing agent that, you know, when I present a document, I try to explain what they are signing, why they're signing it, their purpose, so that they have a really good general understanding. And if, you know, if they need to look over, you know, verbiage, that's fine. Um, I think it's always important, you know, for documents that specify the monies, specifically the monies to be received at closing, you know, da, 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 da. I always encourage my signers to read that thoroughly to make sure that the numbers match. Okay. But, um, but I think that, you know, if you explain the document when you present it, 
that can help to, you know, cut down on a lot of that. So that's just my suggestion to you. But yeah, I did not know that sometimes you're going to have a signer that's going to read every word of every document. Nobody told me that that was going to happen. And it can, especially if, you know, if you allot a certain amount of time in your mind, you, you, and as you get going, you're going to say, okay, this is the type of sign that's probably going to take me around this time. And sometimes you can be thrown for a loop because you're going to have some signers that's going to read every word. I'm glad I got that out because I've been wanting to say that to you guys for a long time. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things that nobody really talks about that you really, really, really need to um, pack your patience with. Um... Another thing, and I've talked about on this channel, but I don't see a lot of channels talking about, um, is that nobody really tells you how you really have to hustle in this. You have to hustle in this career. You have to hustle. And what I mean, I, I mean, we're not talking about illegal hustling. I'm just saying, like, you have to hustle to stand up for yourself for what you deserve. You really, really do. Um, when that, when it pertains to, and you have to speak up for yourself. That's another thing as it pertains to your pricing. Um, you have to stand firm and, and have integrity in this career. It's really, really important. Nobody talks about that. I feel like, um, the loan signing agent job has gone down specifically since, you know, interest rates have changed because people are just willing to take any, any old job willy all willy nilly and they don't care. But you have to really, you know, nobody is talking about how you have to stand firm and what you deserve and not veer off the tracks from that. Because when you do that, you really will, it affects everybody. I'm telling y'all, it's what you do as a loan signing agent affects all the other loan signing agents in your area. I'm going to tell you that right now. If you live in Houston... I'm, I talk about Texas. I don't live in Texas, but I'm just saying, like, I talk about Texas because there are a lot of Texas notaries. It's a big, it's, it's the biggest state, you know what I'm saying? So if you live in Houston and you're willing to take a job for $25 and then you're getting lots of signings and then these different agencies and, you know, um, they start to see, okay, well, they, we have people taking $25. So then they offer it to the next person. They offer it. To, you, know, you really do mess with everybody's money. And I think that nobody's talking about that enough. Um, and I think that, you know, we, it's, it's just about fairness because each job that we do, there's so much that goes into it. You know what I mean? It's not like we're just having you do the signing and that's all we do no like we're doing a lot more we're prepping documents we're preparing them for shipping we're doing scan bags we're checking for accuracy you know what i mean there's so much that goes into each job that we really have to it's it's our job as loan signing agents to make sure that we are setting our pricing right because it's not it's, it's affecting everyone again nobody is not talking about that that's something that you're not expecting, but it, it hits you pretty quick when you get into it. You're like, wait a minute, I did all of that work and I'm just getting this. So, um, you know, these are the things that nobody's talking about and we need to talk more about it. Okay. Um, so that's the second thing. The third thing that nobody talks about and I, I was expecting this just because I'm also a real estate agent, so I already know what time it is. The amount of, you're doing a lot of driving. Um, and if you're new, you may not be expecting that. And unless you might be in a field where you're already driving a lot, I don't know. Um, but if you're not driving a lot and you're just getting into this field, nobody's really talking about the, the amount that you're driving. And again, I'm going to bring Texas up because if you live in a state like Texas where you are allotted you're allowed to notarize anywhere in the state, you know what I'm saying? You could be driving all over the place. So that is something that other notaries are not really talking about, the amount of gas that you might burn, the maintenance of your car. Um, so you just really need to be, you need to be prepared for, um, you just need to be prepared for that. Fourth thing, that there, no one's talking about, they're not gonna tell you, is that you also have to be a crisis manager. <laughs> In certain instances, I've talked to you guys about different little hiccups that you might encounter along the way 
whether it be your scanner or printer is jammed at the very, very last minute and you're scrambling, you got, you know, figure it out. Like, I can't tell you, well, this doesn't happen to me anymore because in the beginning it was happening and I got prepared. Uh, and so I don't, I make sure that this doesn't happen anymore. You running out of toner in the middle of a job like this happens to you, you got to scramble, figure it out. You got to print out 150 more pages then you don't have any more ink. You know what I mean? Or you get to the signing and the signing, the signer changed their mind. <laughs> like for real, then you're scrambling. You got to, you know, call around, call the signing services. You got to call, you know, settlement, like, Ooh, it's stressful. The signer don't want to give you their ID. The signer has an attitude. The signer lives in, you know, in the projects. I mean, these are things. You get there, you're like, oh, I don't know. These are things that come up. And no, people are not talking about that. So you guys just, you really have to be prepared for like, almost the unpreparable. I mean, I'm gonna give you another example. It sounds little, but this is major. I've been at a signing and you have to, most signings you have to do with blue ink. And you have one pen. Again, this happened in the beginning. I learned from this. You have one blue pen. It runs out of ink. You forgot, you don't have any other ones or you thought you put blue pens in your little you know, bag and you put black pens. And then you're, the, the signer doesn't have blue pens either. So you're both looking at each other at a signing and you ran out of ink. And now you have to literally go to, you know, CVS to, in the middle of a signing to go get another blue pen. That happened to me oh, like a year ago almost. You know what I'm saying? So these things have, you know, you they happen. So I guess I say, you know, nobody's just talking about, you have to just be ready to pivot. And I think it all comes with experience too, but I think being over prepared in the beginning is better than being under prepared. Cause there were certain things that I just wasn't expecting. And then it becomes, it could be the smallest thing. Like you need, you cannot sign with, you sign with a black pen, you're gonna have to do the whole trend, everything over, you know? So one little pen can cause a lot of chaos. <laughs> so you just have to kind of be prepared to roll with the punches. But like I said, in the beginning, it's better to be over prepared. Get a thousand, if you need to get a thousand blue pens and make sure you, you know, you're straight. Oh, and y'all make sure you have extra ink. Just do it. Make sure you, you can buy an extra little ink, um, uh, from what notaries I can drop a, a, a notary supply. I'll actually, I'll drop, um, notary supplies. I think I did a video on that. If I didn't, I'll make sure I do a notary supply video, but make sure you have extra ink. If your ink pad runs out and it will eventually run out, the mo more notarizing that you're, you're doing, you're gonna need more ink. You do not wanna get somewhere where you cannot add ink to your emboss, you know, whatever you emboss or, you know, whatever it is, your Jurat stamp, you need to make sure you have ink for your ink pad. That's another thing. So just being prepared, nobody talks about all the little nuanced things that can go wrong during signings, okay? Um, and then, you know, last but not least of what, you know, in the realm of loan signing, what people are just not talking about and preparing you for is, and I try, I hammer it in your guys' head, but people are not emphasizing enough the fluctuations of being in a, a loan signing agent. You have to have other means of making money. You got to really dive into your general notary work as well. You cannot depend on this. We talked about inspections on this channel. We talked about apostles. We talked about all different ways outside of just loan signing that when you get into this business, people are like, oh, they, you know, they think everything is going to be rainbows and everything, but it's not like, you know, I think stuff is going to get a little tougher. I thought maybe stuff would turn around around the first of the year, but I don't think so, you guys. Stuff is getting tougher, so you just have to have a very well-rounded portfolio in your business of what the, the services you offer. If you don't, you're probably not going to do well um, as a loan signing agent, especially if you're doing it full-time. You really need to have other, you know, unless you don't mind how much money you make, but if you're trying to make six figures, 
you definitely have to do better with making your business more well-rounded, okay? So those are about four or five things that I gave you guys that people are not talking enough about. Um, if you want me to go and elaborate <laughs> on anything else that I talked about today, please let me know, you guys. And um, yeah, so I'm going to be bringing you guys more content this week now that I'm kind of home. I don't have as much going on. I only have one loan signing so far um, this week. You know, that could change because I feel like towards the end of the week, you know what else is funny, y'all? Have y'all noticed when y'all go out of town, that's when y'all get all the loan signing offers? You guys, this weekend, I was actually in Dallas this weekend, and I probably got, I'm not even lying, 10 notifications, 10 to 15 notifications for loan signings between Friday and Monday. I was like, every time I go out of town, and I, I, my daughter's with her father, so I, I, if I was in town, I would have been, I would have really had the opportunity to pick up a lot of stuff. But I feel like every time I go out of town, this happens. Um, so, but yeah, anyway, I'll have more time to bring you guys content this week. So I'm excited about that. So yes, you guys, please like, subscribe, share. Um, I am so behind on responding to you guys' comments. So between today and Friday, I am going to focus on doing that. So my apologies if I haven't gotten to your comment yet, but I definitely will. Okay, so you guys have a good rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.